All right, let's start again. Okay, so what I wanted to do also, so part of the goal of this course is to understand, you know, how we do make phylogenies, how we use them, why we do it, and part is to get even into the feel of like actually doing it yourself. Not that you know, in two years, remember, oh, I know how to use that program, because you can know what the steps you have to go use to get at this question, right? Um, <coughs> so sorry. It's out of order. Okay, so this is the only way people can do an analysis, right? Or design, design like a chapter of your dissertation, right? Find some taxi that you like or that lives somewhere fun. You know, I like to study, you know, jellies and plow, or I just love salamanders. You know. um, <laughs> build a tree for it, then gather some sort of traits that might be relevant, right? Pick some sort of analysis that you know you can do. And then test a model, right? Um, and that happens a lot because, you know, I, I am a tortoise biologist. I study tortoises, phylogeny, and I have geographic data. I look at that in the tree, right? Um, that should be unsatisfying. Right? So a better way to do it. Sorry, this is out of order. I don't know what this instead. Okay. Um, first, read a lot. I know what the big questions are. Develop a question, right? Find tax and traits to address that question, right? Then go get the traits, estimate phylogeny, parameters phylogeny, and then once you get that, question whether the results are right. The right? various biases that we talked about you know, that could cause you to have a wrong answer is worth, you know, you know your data better than anyone else does. It's a good position to figure out what's the problem with it. Okay? Um, and so what I want you to do, okay, let's build the tree. And so what I want you to do in the class for today and a little bit next week is to do this yourself, okay? Um, and so questions you can ask, this is crazy to build. Um, okay, you know, you would say, you know, does A affect versification rate, right? So floral symmetry is something we think of that's good versification rate, so we go and test that, actually. So what's the best group to test that in? You know, we might figure that out. Um, <coughs> do B and C correlate, right? So I, you know, like take, take, take the leaf lifespan versus leaf size that we talked about last time. Right? They may think that there should be some positive correlation, or does they think that a certain kind of wood structure correlates with occurring in most habitats? I can test, I can test that. Um, does being, you know, being a K species is that correlated with being a bad invasive species? Right? So test the, that sort of correlation. Right? Does D perceive E in evolution? They only evolve um, parasitism after first evolving to be carnivore. Or can go directly to parasitism? That's the question. What does ancestor F look like? That's what's associated with construction. Right. Um, how did this particular protein work 10 million years ago? Right. Um, the last time oceans were very acidic, how did things sequester um, to make shells? So what, 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 what genes were used back then? Right. Is parameter G important in evolution? Right. So I have <coughs> we have diversification. Do I think that species are evolving independently or do I think they interact? Let's estimate what this interaction parameter is and see. Right? Do I think that change happens only at speciation events or can it happen throughout the tree? Let's measure that and test it. Right? And so you can get these questions that, you know, you, you know, specific questions that relate to broader questions in biology. Right? And answer them with phylogenies. Okay? So what you do in you know, pairs is do the good approach quickly. Okay. There's not going to be a publishable result? Probably not. Maybe, you know, some people have gone on to get things that are close to being publishable. Right. The main point is I want you to start engaging with how you ask questions in this domain and how you start about so how you get solving the answer. Right. So you should develop a good but feasible, a good question. A good question is feasible but interesting. Right. Um, there's some questions are very feasible but are very dull. If I add, you know, if I cut down trees, does that affect the environment? Yes, I know that, right? Um, <coughs> but there are questions that, you know, are very interesting but not feasible, right? Um, how did, you know, mammoths maintain body temperature? You know, I have, I have some evidence for that, but mammoths are dead. It's harder to figure that out. Okay. Um, we're going to think about making a replicable work workflow. Right? What does that mean?
Right. Yep. Um, so, we're, so for example, I was working on a study. We looked at seven traits, and we did thousands of hours of simulations analyses to get this. We found out that one of the traits probably was was something that was measured badly. We only measure it in certain taxa, and we only really believe it in all the taxa. So you know, we don't really think we should use this trait. So all I do is change s equals seven to s equals six number of states. Delete that column and press go. And all the thousands of hours of running went again. You know, carbon footprint shot way up. Right? But all it was a matter of changing a few lines of code, and we could do it. Someone could say, oh, I think you did a bad job with the analysis. Things should have, should have done a Bayesian approach. So I could download my data and my scripts, tweak it a little bit, and rerun it. Okay. So it's very good for both saving you time, but also making other people really good to do your work and check your work and how we communicate in science. Okay. Another thing you're going to learn from this is how long you have getting trees and data. Like, oh, trees are wonderful and great. Okay, I work on bat evolution. Where's my tree? Right. I have this tree of 15 species. Well, that's great. It only has half my species. What do I do now? So I want you to figure out, you know, by working on this, how do we get those trees? And so there's resources like tree bases, the repository of trees. There's resources like you can go to GenMed and get lots of sequence data. Okay. So how do you how do, you do that? Um, getting data itself can be hard. I have to care about I was sitting in my lab looking at um, parasitism in plants, plants that are parasitized on the plants. Right? So where did you find, find that out? Right? You have to go look in various books and see, you know, is this species parasitic? You go out in the field and say, oh, this one has no chlorophyll, it must be parasitic in some way. Um, just have to run a grant to go to New Zealand to look at this sort of thing. Okay? But getting data can be hard. I want you to learn, you learn how, to, how to run different analyses. And then not, not gonna, you're not going to become a, a master of this by any means, but just knowing, okay, I have my tree, how do I get it into something where I can do something with it? How do I get it into R? Okay. How do I get my data into R in a way that's usable? Right. And so working through this in the past, students have found, oh, wait, R has interpreted this as factors, I want it as character. Right. And they could bang your head against that for months. Right. Or you could say, oh, wait, what's going on here? Oh, it has character. Okay. So what you get a sense for what the problems are, so that way when you have your own data sets, when you get into problems, you'll know what to do. You know, maybe not what to do in that particular case, but to how to go about solving the problem. Okay? <coughs> so here's an example of such a thing that you just did. Right? So our R trait positively or negatively correlated other R traits, from like R versus K species. Right? Um, we also have a variety of strategies that are well studied. That's yeah, so a good group for this. Okay. Um, so I've got a mammal tree in data. Okay. So I know that early 2003 happened to have a data set on the you know, number litter size in mammals, time of gestation in mammals, and if those traits are rel relevant. I know there's that big mammal super tree I could use. Yeah, so you already get the tree, get the data. I could then do independent contrasts on this. We talked about the past. That's also a control for a non dependent. Right? And they can also just look at that on the tree and look at we can construct litter size, we can construct gestation time on the tree and save it. It makes sense as well. There's multiple independent origins that see the same thing happen. Okay. This is this sort of study, it's going to be very feasible, it hasn't really been done much. Okay. So what you do is find a, find a partner, and the two of you start working on the rest of the class. Okay. And we'll pick it up again next week. So we sort of figure out, and it could be something that's relevant to your, to your research, or it could be something completely outside that you just think is interesting. You know, work through it as you start going out and try, trying to find the tree, trying to find the data, and then you start having problems, let me know. And work through it. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. I'll let you self assort. Um, make sure everyone's on one, on one team. Try to do it alone. Okay. Go. Everyone get it, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, for something, it's too late, right? So, like, okay, I'm in, you know, a plant lab. I'm not going to start working on mammals, right? Because, you know, that's all we have. Um, but even within that, you know, which would you plant to work on? Oh no, this isn't what you do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but still have a file in a contract.
Oh, no, no, no. Like, I don't want you to do R versus K. This is an example of something you could do. You could do something completely different. Yeah. You should, you should do something completely different from this. I don't want you to do the, this example. I want you to figure out your own examples so you care about. It. What? Yeah. This seems really well thought out. So why would I change it? Okay, why is teaching tiring? This is why it's tiring. <laughs> this whole question. <laughs> Why do you stand up with mill and then put you on the sort? <laughs> right, and you may also stand up and walk to where your partner is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 